Hello, my name is Aurora and I would like to share with you my story of being a walk-in. I've been listening to other people's stories and I also have really felt in terms of my own inner development that now is the time when I'm really prepared to articulate my experience and share it with people because it is a very personal story, but it also involves so much of my artwork um, where my story is expressed in my artwork in these flying rainbow lasagna shapes that I create and also in the two-dimensional geometric abstract forms that I create which are all based upon the chakras and all based upon a multi-dimensional understanding. So my personal story is that on October 8th of 2001 I walked into this body and as I've been listening to other people's stories I found out that just like birth you know, people can have very beautiful births in a jacuzzi where it's very nice and peaceful. People can have traumatic births or, you know, you, you're born in the middle of the Lincoln Tunnel, still in the cab. Um, my birth or experience of walking in was a little bit more along those lines because my predecessor, and I choose that word very intentionally as the personality that literally predeceased me, that uh, before died, and now I am the person who has experienced uh, uh, consciousness after death. So it was a death experience, and it was precipitated by a vascular event or a biological event, but also by a psychic attack. And so basically, the person who used to occupy this body, you know, at age 27 was incredibly healthy and literally walked 15 miles a day and was in great shape. But one day, lay down on the couch for a nap and essentially never woke up. That um, during that experience, she was, and now you can see that I switched to talking about the person who used to be here, that, you know, there was an attack by external negative entities who were able to um, cause neurological damage that stopped blood flow and crucial air supply to certain portions of the brain and eventually stopped the whole body from breathing for an extended period of time. And this body would not have continued to function. It would have no, it was no longer able to carry consciousness and be a viable um, source for embodied life. Um, one moment, please. But this body was really saved through what I call the grace of God. Um, so there are many different things that happened, some of which were, uh, you know, like the creation of this interdimensional portal. Um, many different events happened concurrently in the experience of my walking in and also it was uh, very chaotic and was very much part of a battle and the battle is in a larger war and it is a war between um, forces of organization versus forces of chaos and basically the attack happened because my predecessor was just about to reach a uh, key moment of energetic development in connecting to source, in connecting all of her chakras to source. But there was a blockade that was placed. And we're talking about at higher psychic levels and in the higher dimensional world that there are many networks. Just like you could consider it like computers have firewalls or that in the world of the internet that there is connectivity, there are security um, uh, networks and then there are security breaches. And you can also understand that at higher psychic levels there are certainly entities and negative entities that um, are on alert for, let's say, newcomers or intruders or um, when you begin to open up and activate your spirit eye and you pop your head up into the next dimension that you're very vulnerable, especially as a tiny little you know, child, a new little newbie just opening your eye, just getting up into that realm um, is a very uh, vulnerable time like the little baby sea turtle that has just hatched and is just trying to make it into the ocean of consciousness, but also that 
I was targeted because it was a very key moment in history and there's a critical mass that must be achieved in terms of many people making it to these higher levels of psychic development and then connecting together into a type of neural network like a much larger brain. We're talking about planetary consciousness or mass consciousness. So I was reaching, I was one individual who was reaching these higher states of consciousness when we were just about ready for that mass consciousness shift due to getting enough people. So that is one reason why I was specifically targeted because of the potential that uh, existed in terms of making that connection. And if you blockade that connection, then those uh, events would not happen. And what also happened was that I was exposed to a computer virus of the mind. I would say, just like your computer can be exposed to negative programming that is intending to harm your hardware, take over your software, and essentially take away the free will use of your computer and bring it to the use of someone else, so too was there a mental program at these higher psychic realms. A computer virus of the mind that was attempted to be implanted into me through my third eye and that was not only intending to kill me, but that I am connected to all of the rest of heaven. That I was in that moment of psychic development about to connect my, if you could say I'm analogous to a computer and heaven is like the internet, I was just about to get connected. And so the idea was through this plot or you know this attack to infect my mind and through my connectivity to the rest of heaven to also infect all of the rest of the minds of heaven and essentially destroy Christ consciousness. So we're now talking about a very anti-Christ consciousness attack that was experienced. And what I did as a uh, participant like a person on the sidelines who suddenly was drawn into, a civilian drawn into this battle, um, what I did was I didn't die. I chose not to die. I chose instead to create a new dimension, to create a way to get around the blockage that was placed there. And I did that through my own will and through my own inner creativity that I thought a thought would, which had never been thought before. And this thought is the flying rainbow lasagna. It is the antidote to that mental virus that was attempted to be implanted within me. Um, I will also tell you that now I am articulate about this. This is uh, 12 years after the fact. Um, it took me many, many years for this experience to percolate through and for me to actually have access to it because not only were there many events happening concurrently in psychic space and in regular space, but also what happened during the attack was that my neurology was damaged or the neurology of this body was damaged and to the point that it could no longer sustain consciousness. And so much like, you know, people who have an accident or head injury or tra traumatic experience, there's often amnesia surrounding the events, so the events that happened directly prior to it or directly after it, or that it might be difficult to remember things in order, it was very difficult for me for years to understand what had happened. And the lasagna shape, I was embodying on a deep level, but that also took a lot of time to percolate through in that first for years after, so I will also tell you, you know, the experience itself lasted 18 hours and it was a death experience of being um, completely uh, mentally destroyed and watching one's faculties uh, be reduced uh, to the point of unconsciousness and then experiencing a journey of being attacked in hell and then experiencing a journey of being uh, saved, uniting with divinity, literally being saved by Jesus Christ and having angels um, rush in to my support and rescue and then um, waking up in a body and I knew that I had changed. I knew that I had died. Um, I'm understanding from listening to other people's stories of being a walk-in that for some people it was a gradual process or for some people they didn't know that something had happened. It took many years to reach that realization. I knew instantaneously that the old person who was inhabiting this body had gone. And I liken this now to the analogy of a bell. Like you can have a bell, you can ring a bell, and it is reverberating with that tone. That tone is like the personality. If you stop that bell from reverberating and silence it, and then you start ringing the bell again. Um, it is a new tone. 
and you, it is not a simple continuation of the previous tone that was there. And that is what happened with the neurology and the chakra system of this body, that it ceased to contain the energy of life. And then I came into it as consciousness and with the grace of God, the body was able to be kept alive and it literally took 10 years of operations with uh, my angelic spirit guides that they would operate on me many, many times during the day. And I'm talking about neurological and vascular operations and chakra operations, energetic operations that were done on me um, by higher dimensional entities in order to overcome the damage that was done. So after that 18 hour experience of being on the couch, going through hell, getting totally saved by Jesus Christ and resurrected, and this is from a person who previously, the predecessor did not have a religious uh, did not have a Christ Christian religion, did not have that as their mindset. This was a total change and is one of the, you know, foundational changes that really happened in terms of personality in me as the walk-in Aurora being very different from the person who used to be here. Um, but that when I, you know, opened my eyes and was able to come into this world, I understood that I was in a different world, that I had also gone through a portal, a portal of higher dimension that I looked around and knew I was, you could say I was on a very extremely different timeline or I was in a different dimension where there were aspects of objects that looked similar to the object that were previously there, but they now existed in an entirely new context. And I had lost my numerical literacy uh, in much the same way that a person who might have had a stroke can lose their ability to understand numbers. When I got up, I could not understand a three from a nine. I could not recognize and understand numbers and I had lost my basic math skills. I had also some difficulty with aphasia, which is the incapacity to choose a particular word. And I also, from that experience onward, I was suffering from seizures, uncontrolled seizures that were undiagnosed for many, many years. So for in the intervening years between 2001 and let's say 2004, like I would have multiple sub-threshold seizures throughout the day that caused incredible head pain and I would also sometimes lay down and have shaking episodes after which I would wake up and not really be able to remember what had happened and have a lot of head pain and feel uh, very um, mentally disheveled and um, had a lot of difficulty in clear thinking and organizational thinking like if you want to do this first you do this 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 and this and so for me there was a period of integration that lasted 18 months. So this is 2001 to 2003. And this coincided in terms of world events with the run up to the Iran Iraq war sequel. So I also understand my experience of walking in and the battle that took place there as being part of the interdimensional or esoteric battles on a much higher level that what had happened in September 11th of 2001 opened a portal or a dimensional rift and that my experience of being attacked and the computer virus of the mind that was attempted to, you know, kill me um, was part of that overarching plot. So you can see that I have resisted or been reticent about sharing this story and this information for many years until the climate was right in terms of people understanding what a walk-in is and having more of an understanding of the esoteric nature behind some of the events that we see in world history such as 9-11 and the invasion of the Iraq war. So during that period of time, 2001 to 2003, I still lived in what looked like the same apartment of my predecessor. Um, and there was an overlapping of the two personalities where she knew that she had died and she was like many people who die suddenly and unfairly because this was really a murder what happened to this person. It was really incredibly unfair, but it was also part of her soul contract. And when I say a murder, I do not mean a murder by me. This is not me, Aurora, the body snatcher, who killed someone else and said, now I'm taking your body. This is a murder by literally an evil being who attempted to snuff out the life that was here. And that was part of her soul contract, but she was very angry that that had happened. And so one of the things that I had to do in order to claim full inhabitorship of this body was to help her be at peace, help her be at rest by um, 
uh, uh, assuaging these negative feelings. And this is what really you need to do when you uh, meet an interdimensional being who is dead, who doesn't know that they're dead, in order to help them re release and let go and surrender, you have to tell them about that they have crossed on and it's their time to move on now. And so it was an incredibly loving relationship that I had during that 18 month period that I was trying to um, help the uh, person who used to be here to understand that their time was over and that it was time to surrender and that that is where their peace would come from. And at the same time was very physically ill in terms of having uncontrolled seizures that also made it very difficult for me to eat. So on the one hand, there was the earthly personality who hadn't fully surrendered. And then there was myself, the angelic personality. Like when people would say, where do you come from? I say, I come from heaven. Heaven is a floating collective, a traveling collective of men, mental beings who are bonded together on an energetic level and they are a living ship, a living entity that goes from place to place. And that is um, my spirit collective that I have been connected to as a warrior since I came into this body. So when I came in in 2001, I didn't yet have my name. And I didn't get my name until 2003 when um, the previous personality finally experienced that surrender. And what happened was I left the place that was her apartment where she had been living. And I had to leave. I was evicted. And it was also, uh, there was an interdimensional portal. There was a lunar eclipse. There was um, an alignment that had to be fulfilled. And um, literally, my angelic spirit guides put me in my car and drove me to where I currently live in Woodstock and I left behind all possessions. And I understand now from listening to other people's stories of walking in that it doesn't have to involve total loss, but my experience did, and that it, it was difficult and very painful. I had to let go of everything that was associated with the previous personality. And she had lived like a warrior. She had lived um, as a solitary person without attachments, without responsibilities. So it wasn't a sense of leaving family members, even though I will say that family members did not understand the change that had happened and that I still face with her biological family a great deal of difficulty in if acceptance, but that is really understandable, or and, but and, that is really understandable in terms of the genetic shifts that I have been experiencing, because the flying rainbow lasagna has been applied to my DNA in a way that now my DNA exists in new combinations. I'm a hybrid, so I call myself a walk-in human ET hybrid because I'm a star consciousness, I'm an angelic being, I walked into this presence in that I came into an adult fully formed physical body, but then it's all about what I and my spirit guides did with this body. That by employing the concept of the flying rainbow lasagna and changing and morphing not only my genes but also my energy field, that um, my genes now exist in a new combination or in a new pattern of enfoldment than they used to. And the biological family of this entity, the former predecessor, they, I feel, can really sense that there is a difference and there is a change and that I am other, but there's, it's a difficult road to acceptance. So that's all I can say on that. Um, when I came to Woodstock, um, I literally uh, was brought to the Magic Mountain. I didn't know if you can see it through the window, but it is right back there. I didn't know where I was going. I asked around town. I said, I'm looking for a Magic Mountain. And people said, do you mean the Magic Meadow? And I said, yes. And so there is a place called the Magic Meadow. So that is where I went. And that is where I had the experience of surrender, where finally the previous personality went to peace and I had the experience of being lifted halfway to the clouds. Not all the way. I thought that I would be raptured. I thought that I would go all the way to heaven. I thought that I would no longer have a physical form. I thought that I didn't have to pay my car insurance or take care of anything and just I had to make it up that mountain. Um, but I was only lifted halfway up. And then I received my name, Aurora. No last name. And then I was set back down. And I cannot tell you the levels of disappointment that I had when I woke up and I found that I was cold and it was raining and I was still in existence in the third dimension. And I said, why am I still here? 
but I wasn't there. I had gone through another dimensional shift and gone through another portal, and that was in 2003. So now all of the past 10 years of experience have happened on this level. And really, this is the long story that I'm telling you, but I have, I'm here because I have a message to share, and it is about the flying rainbow lasagna. And it was a worthy enough message to make me go through all of these difficulties so that I could bring it to you. I have to pause this for a moment, but then I'll be back. Don't worry. <laughs>